Um, so, hello everybody. Nice being on this uh, group. Um, I am um, a life and data scientist working for a pharmaceutical company. And for a minute, I wanted to sort of forget everything you know about Jenkins and actually remember everything about Jenkins. Uh, but what we're talking about um, is actually uh, outside the standard DevOps operations. And um, it, all like, is it possible for me to share slides or can you? Do yeah, you, you can just uh, share your screen. Okay. Uh, you should be able to do that. If not, I will uh, fix it, but you should have permission. So there is a share screen a green button on your control panel. Is it? Yep. Okay, can you see the, the slide? Yes, uh, okay. thank you. Good, so I, I put the slides together just uh, so that you have a frame of reference later on if you want to go back and uh, you know uh, refresh your mind on some of these things that may be a little bit out of the uh, standard realm of, of what we're doing with, with Jenkins. Um, but back uh, in 2013, I discovered Jenkins. Um, my, uh, myself, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trained uh, PhD uh, molecular biologist, uh, but I went back to school, I got a master's in software engineering, and I was for a long time interested in, in software development. And I'm in, a, in an interesting um, intersection of, of uh, medicine and uh, data science now which makes a lot of these things really, really interesting. So back in 2013, um, I discovered Jenkins and has been using it since then, um, but we've been using it for a total different uh, application. And uh, a few years ago, we published this paper in scientific literature where we introduced Jenkins uh, as a platform for scientific uh, data and image processing applications. And it has nothing to do with um, actual compilation of code, testing code, and so on. Uh, but nonetheless, it uses all of the capabilities of, of Jenkins. Uh, so I, I really want to start by, by thanking a lot of uh, people that have been um, sort of uh, fundamental in this process. And um, interestingly enough, my uh, boss at the time was called Jeremy Jenkins. Um, and uh, you know, over the years, I've met many of the Jenkins contributors and uh, very nice people in the group, like Oleg and Marky, and even Koshuki, who visited uh, Novartis a few years ago. Jesse. Um, importantly, my colleague, uh, who is now um, in New Zealand, Bruno Kinoshida, who developed some of the uh, key plugins uh, for this and uh, participants in the GSOC 2020 last year where we developed a machine learning plugin for um, uh, for Jenkins. So uh, why use Jenkins for life science applications? Really, uh, there are a lot of standardized um, things that Jenkins offers that are key enablers, uh, such as the accessibility of the jobs via a web portal, the freestyle parameterized jobs, uh, easy deployment, you know, the super rich plugin ecosystem. I'm not going to read this, this, this whole list, uh, but these are what I call sort of the standard enablers of Jenkins that have made this possible. And the benefits that this offers is that um, life and data science pipelining um, really requires the integration of a lot of different utilities, applications, custom script tools, and Jenkins is able to do all of that. Um, finally, we have developed this concept of one page web apps on a shoestring. Um, people can go to a Jenkins job interface and, and um, be able to execute an entire uh, data analysis or data ingestion and, and processing and parsing uh, in a very reproducible um, way that leaves a really good what we call data provenance path where we can always determine where the data came from. And finally, through this similar uh, web portal, we're able to, to share this data with others and, 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 and collaborate. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, uh, you know, there is a kind of an e e impedance mismatch between develop, 
um, and operations and, and science. And just to, always as a kind of uh, funny point, I bring this, this word artifact that we're using in Jenkins. And of course, artifact is used with the idea of something that Jenkins creates. But for science, this is really a spurious observation and a bad thing, um, something that you do not want. So, you know, just that a, a really kind of simple um, example of, of nomenclature where things are, are different. But let's look at uh, specifically a pipelines, jobs and, and builds. Uh, for developers, we check out of code from the SCM. The pipelines are more consistent and continuous. The jobs require very few parameters. The builds are almost always deleted and the artifacts are automatically tested. Um, on the scientific side though, they, uh, there's nothing such as the concept of an SCM for, for data and um, instruments. The files are all over the place, uh, whether it's on, on a particular instrument, on a local network drive. The pipelines are really discontinuous. It consists of an ad hoc mix of the Jenkins jobs. Um, different tasks are encapsulated in separate jobs that need to provide input and output to each other. The builds are almost never deleted because this is really primary data that you're generating. It's not a kind of a, you're not superseding old data, or old uh, jars or old builds. And the artifacts are really inspected, annotated and curated by the scientists rather than, than in an automatic way. Um, another uh, sort of, uh, Infinite mismatch here is around job configuration. You know, for for developers now, you know, we're moving more and more the pipeline as code. Um, uh, you know, um, Andrew mentioned the Blue Ocean project, and I had some questions around its status because it really looked interesting at the beginning because it starts approaching the uh, some of the requirements that uh, scientists have around visual editors for configuring. Um, the jobs, but I, I have tried to use it and I realized that actually it's more for, you know, kind of um, the, the, the build stage and, and, and larger um, sort of um, um, not so granular that it is useful for uh, configuring parameters and, and, um, and we use a lot of the freestyle parameterized jobs, which is not very common for the developers. Um, so what we're missing and still is sort of this uh, configuration, exploration, dependency management, understanding where these things is. What you see on the right hand side is a kind of my attempt to roll my own. This is actually the parameters in a, in a particular uh, job and they depend on each other. Um, and so, and they depend on Ruby scripts and scriptlets that are executed uh, as part of the job. So this is sort of, you know, our own version of trying to understand the configuration better, but it would be great if we had a kind of a um, better supported tool. Search and metadata are um, still issues, I think, in the standard version of Jenkins. Searching for artifacts across different builds is still very difficult. Um, Build level metadata is not searchable uh, and it's not generated very easily. Uh, and the same thing across builds. Um, I think actually Andrew may have touched on this as well around the artifact relationships. Uh, I call it relational builds where, you know, um, a downstream build may depend from two or three upstream uh, builds. And um, it's very difficult to sort of document that. And it's even more difficult to do a cascade delete, which we would like to do if you, if you delete a primary artifact on which a bunch of analysis are um, dependent on downstream, you would like to have the opportunity to at least identify those, devalidate them and, and um, delete them. Um, here is a concept that is critical for what we're doing and is totally missing from Jenkins. What we call this is the interactive pre-builds a lot of activity going on before you even start the build. Um, and this has to do with the fact that uh, starting a complicated um, analysis in R, Python, image processing, whatever, requires the um, selection of a bunch of parameters that they may be appropriate or not for the analysis. 
And going through a full build cycle, um, it's, it's um, very uh, expensive. Um, and so what we have actually uh, would like to do is have a bunch of um, pre-built artifacts generated um, from by selecting different parameters um, and having the ability to generate a set of artifacts each out of these those parameters. And then all the build does, this is some examples of the kind of uh, artifacts we're talking about. We're talking about um, images, we're talking about uh, scientific, uh, you know, um, analysis and that you visualize through graphs and uh, even, you know, data tables and, and so on. And uh, all the build does at the end is archives and reports these pre-built artifacts. Uh, so, for example, here you can see uh, there is a report with uh, six different pre-built artifacts uh, that have, are using different algorithms and different uh, parameters to generate and, um, you know, we have managed, and this is the amazing thing about Jenkins that's still sort of, uh, it, it's one of the greatest joys to work with it because, you know, you can, you can get it to do a lot of different things, right? Even, even these uh, uh, pre-builds that I think that the concept is missing from it. Now, um, something that uh, may not go well um, with a lot of people is, please don't let security eat the function. Um, you know, Groovy, script execution, inline JavaScript, HTML are keys for the kind of things that we're doing. And we have been struggling and struggling to maintain their functionality in the present uh, scheme of, of uh, security improvements. Um, you know, I know that uh, Bruno has been very good at fixing security um, um, warnings and so on, but it's just the nature of what we're, we're doing. Uh, finally, I would like to say that, you know, we're talking about a lot of big companies that are using Jenkins and about a lot of, um, uh, you know, big installations of Jenkins, but for the life sciences and data sciences, we cannot forget uh, how Jenkins would fit into sort of the environment of an academic lab. Um, where, you know, there is uh, an academic lab doing some research, they need to, to deal with their data and their uh, laboratory instruments, and they do have one developer there. Um, it would be great if that developer can apply some of these, these uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, jobs that we have, are developing for um, life science integration and data science um, in a rather easy way. Um, and that's it. I, I will leave you with a set of, of references. And, and uh, if anyone is interested in hearing a little bit more about this, I think we have an Ignite session on uh, applications uh, of Jenkins and, and data sciences a little bit uh, later. And we'll go in a little bit more detail on, on this. And again, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this uh, on behalf of uh, perhaps voices that you've never heard before. <laughs> so thank yeah. you, Alec, for inviting me. Yeah, and thanks a lot for your feedback. Uh, if you want to do an extended session, uh, yeah, Jenkins Online Meetup uh, always welcomes you. And yeah, there is a lot of good points. Uh, definitely, we, it could be worth uh, discussing. Like, I especially appreciate the point about security and yeah, things like World Ocean. Yeah, we discussed them a lot at the previous summits. And I think that it's a really valid point uh, from a user standpoint uh, who actually want to keep Jenkins as a framework uh, for use cases like bioinformatics or whatever, where you still do not get like things out of the box, but you want to use the uh, power of Jenkins as an automation engine.